Greetings, transporters. My name is Dr. Kelsey Ralph, and today we are going to answer, can we build our way out of congestion? This is an important question because when we're suffering in congestion, frustrated, stuck behind a bunch of cars, our natural inclination is to widen the roadway. With more lanes, surely we're going to get out of this congestion mess. But today I'm going to talk about two reasons why that's probably not going to work. The first is that trying to build our way out of congestion is very costly. It takes many years to plan and execute a road project. We have to purchase huge amounts of land, we have to rip that land up, pave it over. All of that is incredibly expensive in terms of materials and labor. The worst of all is that it might not work. And that's because of the story of induced demand. So it works like this. We start with a congested roadway and we expand capacity. We add a lane, maybe even two. For a hot second, everything is great. There's more room for the cars on the road. We can travel faster. It feels like relief. But that faster speed attracts new trips. Drivers come from other routes, other times of day, and other modes through a process called triple convergence. So folks used to be driving on a a parallel route that maybe was a little bit slower. Now they switch to the freeway. Maybe they were leaving work a little bit early and now they're going to leave right at the rush hour with everybody else. Or maybe you have someone walking, biking, riding public transit who sees, actually, the street is faster than it used to be. I'm going to switch there too. This process of triple convergence happens in the short term pretty quickly. In the long term, firms and households move to the area. They change their location choices, and that adds even more trips to the uncongested roadway. All of these new trips mean that the roadway becomes congested once again, and we're right back to where we started. And you might wonder, is this just some academic theory? Well, no, it actually plays out like this time and time again. For example, I went to UCLA for my PhD, and the entire time I was there, uh, they were working on widening the 405. They spent a billion dollars doing it and five years working on the project. And when the project was done, congestion was just as bad as it was before. And it might still be worth it. More people were getting through the corridor. There were fewer collisions and crashes, but congestion was not reduced. Transit is also subject to induced demand. Let me show you how. First, we start with a congested roadway, just like before. And now, instead of expanding the road, we expand transit capacity. Maybe we add a rail line or a bus network. That causes some drivers to switch to transit, which, just like a road capacity improvement, temporarily increases speeds. But the new faster speeds attract new trips via triple convergence, and we end up right where we started, congested roadways. This happens in the real world, too. In San Francisco in the 1970s, BART opened, and temporarily there was relief on the San Francisco-Oakland Bay Bridge. But congestion returned within six months as drivers responded to the new faster speeds on the bridge, attracted new trips, and ended up with congestion all over again. So to recap, we often try to build our way out of congestion, but doing so is incredibly expensive and almost certainly won't work because of induced demand. That's all for today. Until next time, safe travels.